Hey guys, it's Kate and I hope you're having a great day. I'm here with a watercolor and I broke out my Marie's Masters watercolors and I'm just going to put together a quick floral abstract today. I was kind of feeling some darker colors so I end up playing around with this background but first I'm going to start off with some lighter earthy tones and I'm putting them down on dry paper so I'm working wet on dry so I can get a little bit of that brush texture and I'm working with New York Central watercolor paper which is 100% cotton. I get it at Jerry's Artorama and it's not too bad. It's 140 pounds and I'm still kind of playing with it but I like trying different papers and it seems to work pretty well. Now there is some slight buckling because I didn't spray my paper. I wanted it pretty dry so You'll see it kind of curl a little bit, but that's easy to fix afterward. If you want, you can also spray both sides of your paper, work wet and wet, and then you won't have that buckling uh, while you're painting. Or you can use just crazy thick paper, but I'm not doing that today. <laughs> So I, I was just kind of playing around with paint and I wanted to add some blues and darker colors. So I'm just having fun adding some sort of blue towers <laughs> to my painting. And I really love how this paint goes down on paper and it's so richly colored. You can see it there. You don't need a lot. Sometimes during this painting, I'll dip right into the paint, but um, I also will use my mixing tray a bit too. And I'm just making it very loose and getting those brush strokes in there. And at this point, I wasn't really sure what I was going to do. I didn't go in with any kind of plan. I just knew the colors that I wanted to work with. And I just love that blue. Now these are from the tubes and I actually bought an empty palette online and then I let the paint secure in there. So those are, um, those dried for a couple of weeks at least. And I did do a swatching video and I've since bought a few more colors and added those to the palette too, along with some Da Vinci, I think it's Da Vinci, uh, buff titanium kind of up there in the top. That's the only color in the palette that's not Marie's. And from my understanding, there's two kinds of Marie's watercolors. You've got your uh, regular student grade, which I hear are not very good. And then there's the Marie's Masters, which is um, supposed to be very good. I really enjoy using them and I haven't used a lot of professional watercolors, but you can see how they perform here and I just love using them. They do feel different than some of the other watercolors I've used and they just go down really nicely on the paper. So I'm kind of putting in some water or watercolor flower petals in different areas and I'm kind of double dipping my brush to get some color variation but you can't see it too much just because it's it's very dark anyway so I'll end up going back in and adding some some other color to it but I love that purple it's beautiful I'm just finding some areas to put things and I've got this mix of uh, purple and blue going on. Now normally I wouldn't be waiting so long before going back into the same flower petals again while it's wet so that it won't leave too much texture on the paper, but I didn't have a problem here. The paper handled it well and now I'm adding in the yellow and that first one, the yellow kind of got away from me a little bit, so I'll go back and fix that. There's actually a couple of fixes in this project today, so um, you'll get to see what I do for both.
So I just kind of mop up that yellow. But you'll also see here as I'm adding my flower stems, I got a little bit distracted at the time when I was painting. And so I accidentally put this brush stroke of black sort of just on the paper, but to the side and end up adding some, just, just going with it and kind of turning it into part of the painting. There it is. <laughs> so I'm sitting there like, what should I do? So I just kind of put in some new leaves and grasses coming up and just making it more, um, more marks. And I actually really liked it. So it was a happy accident, like Bob Ross would say. <laughs> And I'm just putting in some more finishing touches here and then I will let it dry again. And I am going double time here for speed just so that I can keep this video shorter and you don't have to watch every single step full, full time. But I'm just making sure my leaves are nice and dark and then I end up adding a couple of little ones to the top too, just so that um, I can have it kind of continue a little bit in the different spots. But those ones I make a little bit of a lighter gray color and I don't get so heavy with that black. And then I'm also going to add a little bit of yellow just for some extra pops of brightness. And then I will let it dry. So once it dries, I wanted to add some more um, definition to the flower petals. So I went in with some more color and I'm just kind of going in with sort of a scrubby brush and it's sort of firm and I'm just going in and adding that, um, that sort of burgundy color into the petals in some areas and I'm just going around the paper and I thought that it looked really nice. I'm getting the color right up against that yellow center area. And it just kind of warmed it up a little bit. Now I knew on this painting, I wanted to add gold accents and I broke out the uniball pen for that and I got a bit carried away. So if that happens to you, it doesn't have to be the end of it. Um, I ended up, you know, really liking the effect itself, but I just really put too much in, but I, I was just sort of going along and didn't really realize as I was going. And then when I took a look at it, I just thought to myself, that's, that's too much for this. So, um, I ended up and I cut some of it out just so you wouldn't have to watch, but, uh, that uniball ink is not, um, waterproof I guess when it dries I don't think it is because I was able to kind of go over it with that same scrubby brush and a little bit of moisture and I just worked that gold color into the flower petals so that it wasn't so bright and noticeable and then I ended up adding a little bit of watercolor over it but for this I did get some of that Titan buff and yellow and define the centers more and I'm adding some black here for uh, just some more detail in there. And then I'm also putting in some green down at the bottom, just in a few areas for some light color.
So now I'm going in with that gold mark or gold pen and I loved the look of it and I'm really happy with how opaque it is and how well it covers the dark. Um, and I love it to this point and even a little bit further, <laughs> but then I get a bit carried away. So you'll see my scampies here. She says, hello. <laughs> <laughs> she's got some zoomies this morning and she's just running around having fun. Um, so I add some details to the flowers and I think if I had just stopped here, it would have been perfect for me, but then I started adding it to the petals and everything. So I definitely did too much for me. <laughs> Somebody else might really like that, but um, so then I go over it with my damp brush and kind of work that into the paper a bit, which actually didn't look bad later because it added a little extra detail, but I do add some paint over it and end up really, really toning it down. So if you ever add too much of something, you can always fix it and make it better. I don't know if you can hear Scampy, but <laughs> she's she's having a good day. She's getting some pets. <laughs> oh, all right, girl. <laughs> so anyway, uh, I'm just finishing up covering that up and then I'm going to pull it up and do a close up and you'll be able to see the toned down marks versus the full strength. And it actually added some nice variation and I ended up really enjoying how this turned out. So I hope you enjoyed this video and until next time, keep creating.